Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with another BoatingTechTalk.com. So we've got a question, actually this is a question from three people, Laura, Kevin, and Tara. The question is, Jeff, I have an older 27 Boston Whaler Cuddy. My kids have, a starting, have started boating with me and we have tried overnight camping or staying on board a few times, which they love. Yeah, staying overnight on a boat is pretty awesome. I agree there. Problem is, all of our electronics need to be recharged. I would like to add a marine inverter and wonder if you can make a recommendation. Okay, okay, good question. Well, first of all, um, you might not need a marine inverter to recharge, for example, your iPhone or an iPad. As we know, uh, iPads, iPhones are actually charged at USB, via USB, um, and that's five volts, and you can get that via a cigarette lighter. So I would encourage all of us to not recharge your phone, your tablet, via an inverter because it's actually inefficient. It's converting to another currency to reconvert to the original currency. There's no reason to recharge a DC appliance. Think about this. You're going to go from 12 volts to 120 so that you can come all the way back to 5, right? It's sort of silly. We wouldn't do that day to day. So now that we know that, always think about all devices that use 12 volts or less, and especially USB, which is so convenient and it's everywhere, um, get recharge all those devices that can be recharged from USB directly from cigarette uh, adapters. Or now they have what used to be obviously cigarette lighter. Uh, now they're just changing them just to be dual USB, right? So you like I've done that on my boat. We do this all the time. So you're just changing a cigarette lighter adapter to just simply a USB sort of outlet. Good idea. Now, back to the inverter question. Okay, so now that you've handled the things that could be recharged directly from your batteries, how do you size an inverter? The reality is that most things like an iPad, a laptop, a TV, um, all of those things are very little, low power draw. So you could actually install probably, and I did that on my boat, I installed a 300 watt dedicated inverter to just power the small stuff. Small stuff on my boat is uh, TV, laptop, uh, it could be, it's a bunch of stuff. It, it's little stuff. Now it's not a vacuum, it's not a kettle, it's not a blender, it's not an espresso machine. It's not all those things, but it's sort of all the everyday little items. So, you know, a 300 watt inverter is probably going to do, a 500 watt inverter is probably going to do, and you definitely want to always, always look at a true sine wave. But in terms of size, a three 500 watt inverter is fine for small electronics. You know, it could even do for recharging, I don't know, a power tool battery. Now you might want to consider a larger inverter like a thousand or two thousand or three thousand watt. And the reason you would do that is, for example, a two thousand watt is a really popular inverter because it allows you to power an espresso machine, right? And it's, it's a common request that we get is, Jeff, I'd like to be able to run an espresso machine in the morning without running my generator and without being connected to shore power. So that's two thousand watt. 1,000 watts is a little bit more tricky because there's not that many appliances that are sub 1,000, but you might get a toaster that's sub 1,000, a microwave that's sub 1,000 watts, you know, but if it's really close and the microwave is 975, then I would not recommend getting a 1,000 watt inverter. You might want to go a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, size, you know, start three, 500 up to, of course, is, you know, you can start stacking. Some people go crazy, but for this boater, you know, on a, on a Boston Whaler 27, yeah, probably I would say anywhere between 300 watts to 2000 watt. The other factor too is if you do have a generator on board and you want to recharge your batteries faster, what we sometimes do is go for a larger inverter where we don't really want the larger inverter, but we do want the larger charger. So actually on these sort of boats, you know, um, 25, 30, 35, we commonly deploy a 3000 watt inverter not for the inverter so that they can run two appliances at the same time, like a micro microwave and an espresso. No, what we're doing is we're putting that 3000 watt inverter so that they get 125 amp or 150 amp charge rate. And then when they're running their generator, they can recharge their batteries much faster. So if you have a generator on board and you're considering getting an inverter, well then consider an inverter charger to reduce your time that it takes to recharge your batteries, assuming your battery bank is sufficiently big to take advantage of that higher charge rate. 
When looking for an inverter, other things to consider is how will you operate it remotely? Because generally the inverter is going to be buried somewhere. So you're going to want to have some sort of ability. Uh, and we certainly do that with an inverter that you can actually have a control panel in a more convenient location. So that's something else. Um, there's inverters that have, you know, the ability certainly, not all of them do, but you definitely want an inverter that you can turn the inverter on and also turn the charger on separately. So if you get with an inverter charger, you want to have the ability of turning the inverter on and off and the charger on and off separately. Victron does this, of course Magnum does this, Xantrax does this. Uh, all the big names, Mastervolt, all the big players that we all heard about are certainly doing it right. Where it gets interesting is these sort of secondary players that are coming into the market. They might not truly understand yet the requirements for Marine. And so sometimes those devices fall short and it's disappointing for the owner. So do your homework in figuring out what's important to you. Um, reputation is also really important. You know, at the end of the day, we don't want to have an inverter that nobody's ever heard of. You can take a chance and some of some boaters do, but generally I tell with people with inverters, it's a probably a 10 to 20 year investment. So buy something once and don't worry about it. And those, that's how I would shop for an inverter for my boat. So thanks for asking the question. I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of this cool content and also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, we've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.